Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Um, we are jumping in to assignment five, demo four. Um, sorry, trying to think if we have any housekeeping stuff. I think we went through pretty much everything. Um, let's see. Keep an eye out for another email uh, from Ellie and I between now and uh, Monday. Um, obviously, I think a lot of us had some trouble with the PDF uh, submission like format. So maybe Ellie and I will discuss a little bit more on that, and then maybe we'll switch to another form, um, like like a you know just a JPEG, like a image. Um, I know that iPhone started switching over to HEIC, which would be a little bit of a problem. Anyways, don't worry about that. We'll talk about it, um, and then you'll get something well before Monday. That way everyone's set to submit their stuff on time. Okay, so let's see. Our next thing, um, okay, so today is our last demo before assignment five is due. So we're gonna be going over um, how to construct objects that are a little bit more complex. So this is kind of based on what we're seeing um, in assignment four. It looks like there were some, some of you experienced some problems on like where to place certain components, especially if they were like kind of um, based off of like a hinge, like they were rotated or something like that. So definitely awesome that you guys tried those complex things. Like that's great, keep doing that. We're just gonna go over that a little bit more. And then, um, yeah. So more detail on this. Today, we're gonna be looking at um, uh, how to construct um, a somewhat complex object. Now, we're not going to go into the detail that we normally would. We're going to leave things a little bit more simplified. Um, but, nevertheless, let's take a look. Okay. Okay. So, um, this is one of my prized possessions, as silly as that sounds. Uh, it's a popcorn maker and you put it on stove. I love this thing, I've had it for quite a while. And there's a lot of like interesting stuff going on here um, with like the components and um, you know, how would we go about assigning like where these things fit together, how they fit together, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically again, we're just gonna go through and so show like how would you go about building this? Not so much like the little fine details of like curvature, form. Um, we're not gonna be doing like those little like rivety deals or like the little gears or anything. We're just gonna show you like how do you go about placing those. Sweet, okay. Let's jump in. Okay, so uh, once again, I'm going to try and start uh, really, really light. Okay, so, okay, let's keep this consistent. So let's uh, imagine that I'm planning my composition. So here's my paper. And then how do I want to do this? So let's do, um, we'll do two views this time. Maybe... We'll do it at a fun angle, like this, and then maybe the the handle goes here, and then it has that little part that comes down, and then maybe another one here a little bit, whoops, like that, and maybe the handle We have a little bit of overlap here. Okay, that's one option. Let's try another. Um, how about... How about that? And then maybe... Another one from 
from the back. Hmm. Kind of like them more floating, you know? Get some more fun drop shadows that way. What about, uh, let's look at a portrait. Hmm, no, I already think I did not kind of like that. Okay, I think this first one is kind of fun. Yeah, that's a cool opportunity there. Okay, sweet. So, let's jump in. Let's start light. Okay. So, okay. So I'm gonna start with my box. Those actually probably need to be a little bit more like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool, cool. So there's, hmm, that actually doesn't look quite cubish enough to me. Well, sorry, not a cube, but like a, that top face didn't look square enough to me. So if I had put a, an ellipse in there, it would have been a little too elliptical. It needed to be more circular. Oops. Okay, so that feels better. There's that first one. Where am I putting the second one? Sorry. Keep reviewing that. Okay. It's going to be something... Maybe a little closer to the horizon line, make it a little bit more dramatic so that ellipse would be kind of more intense. Okay. So then, where are we putting our handles? Okay, so that one will, oops, my bad. Gonna go over there. And this one's gonna aim to be over there. Okay. So let's look at this one first, star or uh, left. Can this go further? No. Okay. You know what? Hold on one second. Let's switch this. Because I'm right handed. Gives me a little more space. Okay. So course first we're gonna carve out our cylinder right so there's gonna be an ellipse inside this box okay pull it down and then Another one in this box. Cool. Hmm. These proportions might be a bit off. Uh, the photo makes it look pretty like short. It's really not in reality. Okay, so you guys will just have to trust me. Oh, haha, uh -huh. there's our fun graph. Okay. So, um, all right, now let's think about how we would go about constructing this. So again, like I said before, we know we want our handle kind of going off in that direction. So that can be kind of our, um, oh yeah, that's a good one, because that's gonna be tough. So we're basically using this as our the center of our um, container, our pot, the popcorn maker. So the first thing that I would probably do next is figure out the kind of width of this like crossbar. So I could basically imagine a rectangular prism that's perpendicular to 
the center line. And just like how if we were drawing a box in perspective and we're drawing the center line, how there's probably a little bit more width on this side than this side, when we look at it like two-dimensionally, the same thing is gonna apply here. So I would probably estimate that that crossbar is like something maybe kind of like that. Oh, you know what? No, I need to back up. Sorry, give me one second. So I'm gonna erase just a few of my construction lines. Make sure you guys can see this really clearly. So what did I do wrong? I think that I missed my center point where the center of my uh, cylinder is. So let's do that again. Okay. Okay, that feels, I think, a little bit better. So let's go back. Okay, so here's that front edge to us of that crossbar, and there's the back. So you'll notice there's more space here than there is here, based on this principle. Okay, so there we go. And then, so now I am almost 100% sure that this first little gear guy is in the very center, but if we imagine the top of this face as being the top of like these like flaps that come up to let the popcorn out, then this like, gear is actually raised up. So now we need to extrude this crossbar up. Okay, and then we can imagine a vertical, well, not a truly vertical, uh, a line that follows to this vertical right here. And then on top of that crossbar, now we're here on top, we can imagine the space where we put That was bad. That ellipse. Something kind of like that. Probably have a bigger. Yeah, that feels better. And then that gear would come up from there. Sweet. Now, it looks like there's some parts, some fun parts over here. So there's like a little L-shaped thing. We can just kind of extrude that like so. And then, okay. Now, just like we use our X to find the center, we can pull that same line down. And that's the like front center of our container and so now we're going to put in this thing so those lines that i just drew i'm imagining that there's an ellipse that goes all the way around so that's where those lines come from so if i were doing this in a more normal perspective here's my cylinder and if I want to put like a little panel on here, I would pretend there are cylinders, ellipses, sorry, here and here. So that's exactly what I'm doing over here. So now, uh, if I were to look at this little clippy claspy thing from this side, I have a picture of it. No. Okay, kind of. I have. I have this. It's sort of like, and boom, and then it comes out 
like that. Curves around a bit. There's like a spring back there. So I'm basically giving you an orthographic view. Here's the wall. That comes in and touches. And then underneath there is a really cool claspy doodad thing. Okay, so basically now I'm gonna recreate that on the side. So here's that part. And it comes down and in. Something kind of like that. I'm doing this a little bit quickly to give you guys the the quick version. Oh, you know what? No. I do that straight. That should be, or curved. That should be straight. Sorry. Okay. Redo. So, okay. How do we find, so if this claspy bit, let's say it looks something like this in perspective. How do we find this line here? Because we would not use that vanishing line. That doesn't work. It's actually going to be perpendicular to that center line that we found before. So, like that. Oops, that's actually not enough. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So we can draw our ellipse there to get us started. And it comes in and back out. In and back out. Give it some material thickness. Okay. And then we know that there's that metal claspy part that starts here and then it looks like it comes out out down down back in and through here just play those out a little bit okay yeah i think that actually worked So actually one way that could have um, improved this whole situation a bit is if I had constructed this box originally more like this. And put it there, because then the vanishing lines would have been a little bit sim simpler from a construction standpoint. They would have all followed that vanishing line that goes that way. So I just made it more complicated by doing this. Okay, so that's actually probably a good call out in making sure that when you pick your, um, when you create your construction box or your volume or whatever, it re references the most like useful things. Like I should have done this basically. Instead of this, because I had to create a new vanishing line. Probably added just a little extra layer of complexity that you guys didn't particularly need. Okay. But let's keep moving on. So next, let's look at this. Um, there's like this U-shaped part back here. Yeah, right here. Okay, so how would we go about constructing that? So we're gonna use the same like vanishing point that we have created here, because it's gonna start about there. Let's stop about there, come up. And then there's an ellipse, so you can see how these have like a semicircular profile. So an ellipse there should be really, really thin. Oops, okay, so there's a mistake. That did not look good. 
these lines need to follow these lines. So that ellipse is really, really thin. Make sure to give it some mass. Boom. Okay. And then it has a base. It has some thickness. That base and thickness will appear again over there. And then to reference the same lines, come up. Really, really thin ellipse. Give it some thickness. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Next, uh, there's that bar that goes through it, which means there's an, I would put another ellipse here, and you can use that center line to know where that should go. Another ellipse there, really, really thin. And then there would be this other gear part. Okay, and then let's get to the fun part, the handle. All right, put a picture in the back. There we go. Okay, so it's pretty much on the same face as the back of that metal bit. And then I would start by making just a cylinder And then you can fix the cylinder into a, oops, sorry. Yep. Fix it into its actual, like, more organic form later. Just give yourself the initial outline, the volume first. And then, okay. So now we can use the center line that came from this metal rod to use as a reference of this part coming out. And now, okay, now let's say I definitely want this next part to come down. So I'm gonna pick a line. Or actually, one thing that you could do if you wanted was to create like a, a plane just to help you understand spatially where it's going and say you want it to say say you want it to go down there and then come out this way you at least give yourself like a oops that's probably a little more angled like that like so, and then another ellipse, yeah that feels okay, cool. Next, let's look at, ooh I have an idea, on the next one let's open up one of those flaps where the popcorn comes out. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's a little, like, a rivet or something right there. Don't forget the details. Details, details. Oh, no. Is that from the first Spider-Man movie? Like, the Tobey Maguire one? Oh, I hope not. I was not a fan. Okay. Anyways. Let's look at these. Um, they're like little handles for how to, you know, pull up those those flaps. So how would I find those? Those look like they're parallel to that central uh, pillar, the little cylinder or whatever. So I would actually go back and reference this line, the one. So I'd say probably like that yeah I think that's right and then we can imagine a little plane here where our ellipses would go those are actually gonna be cones 
because they come out quite a bit. Oh, no. I did it again. We need to be referencing that here. Closer. Better. Same thing. Follow this line. Yeah, sweet. Okay, and then there's a little part that comes out. So I would say again, follow these parallel lines. Actually, it's inside that edge. And now, so this is a tough, tough one because from the side, this thing is obviously really wonky, almost like that, right? But from a front view, it's almost just gonna look like this with you know, your little lines that say it's curving. And that's basically what's gonna happen here because if you, I mean, it's just gonna be so slight. Actually, that should kind of go the other way. Yeah, something kind of like that. Okay, let's see what other little things. Um, there'd be, there's some screws back there. I think we saw those in this image. Yep, so if we were doing, if I could show you a close up. Like that, and then there's the pillar in the center. Excuse me, and then there's the handle that comes out. Ooh, yeah. Use this ellipse and the center line as a reference. So if your vanishing lines are going that way, there's where you can reference for those fasteners, those screws. Okay. So those aren't really going to show up very well on this grayed out sketch, but that's how you can find them. Anything else? Oh, I think what, Ooh, let's talk about these vents. Those are interesting. So the vents are kind of like, so they're like triangular prisms, sort of, so they're kind of like. vent sort of like that um, so how would we place these if we look at it from a top view they almost make an X so this would be an instance where if you kind of like make an educated guess so again the the center is in there so I might say and then one over here Mm-hmm. Yep, that works. And then make them perpendicular. More area on the side closest to us. Just getting it in like that. Okay. These would just be seen as like a bump, essentially. This one we'd see pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think at this point, if you guys want to do a deep dive and really sketch this thing out, let me allow you to look at the images and then you can pause, of course, on any of these images so you can see in greater detail the parts of it that you want to sketch. That spring in there would be really fun. This whole little bit right here would be pretty fun to draw in higher detail. Those would be really annoying to draw. That'd be tough. I mean, you guys can do it. It's just a matter of time.
basically, and figuring it out. But you all could do it. Okay, so there are all the images. If you wanna go back and really, really sketch it, um, you can pause on those to examine a little bit closer. Again, today I really wanna show you guys like the construction aspect to it. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm recording. Yes, okay. Um, okay, yeah, the construction, how to like reference certain elements and things to, to find where they're actually should be placed in everything. Not gonna do like the full deep dive, all the details. Um, hopefully this is helpful, especially when you guys are trying to do like exploded views or things with hinges. Um, hopefully this kind of stuff is helpful. Okay, so let's jump into this one and let's, I'm actually gonna bring this down. I want you guys to make sure that this is like very clear, okay. So I'm gonna put an ellipse here. That comes down. Okay. Now, I wanted that line, the handle and everything to go over there. I think I'm gonna change my mind for this one. And I'm going to, using these lines here, make my X, okay. There's my center line. Okay, so what if I were to do something where like, let me throw in my crossbar that supports structure first. Okay, what if I wanted to put the flap so, first of all, I, I would basically not spend a ton of time, like, figuring out all of, well, you could. So let's say I'm, I'm going to put that flap up. It would follow that vanishing line. Hmm, it's actually probably going to be more like this because you can imagine that like pathway that this point following being an ellipse yeah I would say you could just kind of guess honestly and do something kind of like that because that still looks pretty good it's a believable right Let's say just use your best judgment. Okay, so now, how do I find where to put our nub on here? Well, we have our X, our center. I think that actually needs to be. I like that. Yep, okay. So there's our center, right? So now, if we know that there's that crossbar here. I would use this point. Sorry, that was a poor explanation. Okay, if our center is here, we're gonna go over the crossbar and down because it adds mass. And then from that point, use these reference points. Oops, okay. That's not helpful. Apple pencil, please don't die. So that'll be the reference of the center of our ellipse, which should actually probably look a little bit more like that. Yep. And then that is where we will create our plane with that ellipse. And then the actual, so now how do we create that cylinder that goes up this way? Basically, that line should be perpendicular. Mm, that's hard to explain. 
So imagine that there's a face there. Yeah, that is tough to explain. I think maybe you guys will just need to eyeball it at this point in time. And then as you develop your skills, you'll get better. Should be something kind of like that. That doesn't look quite right. Hmm. I feel like that doesn't feel right either. Hmm. That is tricky. Hold on, I need to grab this thing and look at it. solving together now. Okay, maybe this wasn't square enough, and it was too... Oh, yeah. That feels better. Yep, that works. Okay, yep, so I just made my plane to rectangular and not square enough. That was it. Okay, so there you go. Um, I think my apple pencil is about to die. So yeah, just make sure that when you have these parts that you're just using your construction lines to figure out where the center is or where the references are. So like in the example of like the waffle iron, remember when we did that, if this is the top plane, make sure you remember that it comes down, then there's probably a hinge or something here that adds material to say, hey, there's pieces here, and then maybe it comes up, and then you can start constructing that other part and then that'll probably have you know material thickness to it comes up and then in and then back something like that right so keep that kind of stuff in mind um, that is pretty important all that jazz okay Mm, drop shadow. Drop shadow. Name. Title. Don't forget the good stuff. Um, I think that's it for today. Good luck with assignment five. Can't wait to see what you guys are sketching. Um, real quick, it is uh, not so fun not being in class. I definitely miss being in person, especially with how easy it is to go stir crazy. So hopefully you guys are having a chill time. Um, yeah, see you later.